Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So we're going to move on to the final day of Goodwood. Um, I actually kind of feel we've been a little bit unlucky this week. Um, M for Jar finishing second. Let's just go through some of them. M for Jar second. Electrolyte wasn't good enough. Kinross I didn't think was given her the best of rides and we went against Audience who I said would be great over seven. Ignored Kiprios. Uh, what did we have in... Uh, Lord Ridderford just ran rubbish. Um, Carados second. Arase won for us. And then in the final race, we didn't have one because of uh, that was day one. Day two, uh, French Duke won for us. Jabara got disqualified. Asterius finished second. So two seconds on the trot there. I think we should have had th the first three winners. Henry Longfellow uh, wasn't good enough. Um, True Wisdom wasn't good enough. Ignored that race. Then we had... I'm just looking on my other screen whilst I'm going through this. That's why I'm... A mum's tipple wasn't good enough. So there was a few winners here and there. Um, I thought Zana here ran a great race in the Galway Plate. I don't think he got the clearest of runs. And I think... I personally think he should have won that. Nürburgring did win the Galway Hurdle for us. Um... And I'm sure some of you will have given up with my selections. Um, hope not, though, because we did just have a 25-1 to 1 winner at um, Goodwood. The first race, Master Milliner winning the race again. We've been on him twice at Goodwood. He's won for us at 14s. We might have got a bigger prize that day. And 25s. Um, he was also my third best for the day. So, yeah, hopefully you um, stuck with me through what can... You know, we do get that. We get rocky patches. And then we can land big price winners sometimes or um, multiple winners on the day. Anyway, let's move on to tomorrow because um, that's gone. That's been and gone. That doesn't matter. Move on to tomorrow. We have... Um, we start off with the Coral Stakes. No, we don't. Yes, we do. And I'm not interested in the first race. The second race on the card is where we're going to start, and that is the Coral Summer Handicap. And you can actually see who, who I've highlighted here that I'm going to have a bet on. It's one of our good friends, uh, Yukon Glenn. I, I I think he's a big price. Um, let's just look at his price at the moment. He is currently available at 16 to 1. I think he should be shorter than that. Now, let me explain why. So, he is... 11 years old that's quite old for a horse for a flat horse for sure it's quite old for a jumps horse isn't it um he did only win two runs ago and uh, the 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 real key for this horse is the trip he needs a mile and five mile and six maybe a mile and seven at a push he gets a mile and six if we actually look at his last runs over a mile and five and a mile and six he was winning at air over a mile and five he was finish, finishing second at um, hamilton over a mile and five he was well beaten in the old Borough Cup. That did come off a mark of 97. He'd finished fourth in an Ebor of 96. He finished third in this race um, behind Sweet William and uh, Adjuvant. Obviously, Sweet William went on to finish second recently in the Goodwood Cup behind Kiprios. Uh, keep going back through his form. Fourth in an air, uh, race at air off 99. Only beaten a length and a bit. The key is the trip third at Haydock in an old Borough Cup of 105. Third behind Trawlerman and Baj Door of 102. His form is brilliant, actually. Just looking at his 1 mile 6 form, it reads, since um, his third at Goodwood in 2022, 3, 7, 3, 4, 4, 3, 4, O for unplaced, you know, not even in the top 10, 2, 1. And he's, he, I think he's down to a mark that he can certainly get in competitive off. You know, he ran in this race last year off at 96. He runs here off 92. He ran the year before off 102. He runs here, as I said, off 92. He's down to a mark that he could certainly go very, very close in, close off. Um... And yeah, I want to give him a chance at a massive price. It's not like he's been running badly. He's actually been able to get his head back in front recently. He will be weighted with. He will be strong at the finish. Um, and he's, he's, the ground is fine for him. I'm really happy with Yukon Glenn in that first race, to be honest. Uh, the 225, or the second race, but the first one for us. The 225. 
Moving on to the three o'clock, and you can see I've left this race alone. Now, it's going to sound a little bit like sour grapes. Um, I think Free Wind will win this. However, Kieran Schumark gave Emily Upjohn a terrible ride. John Gosling's horses aren't particularly firing. And I don't want I don't want to take something on on the basis that I, I I don't want to pick another horse because I think Free Wind is the best horse in the race, but I can't pick Free Wind because her trainer and her jockey are just bang out of form and, and have lost confidence. So I'm gonna leave that race alone. Um, but that does mean we can have a, a couple more bets later on in the card, I think, including in this next race, where we're going to have three. We're going to have three in the Coral Stewards Cup. And we'll start off with the shortest price one, which is Puro Sange. Puro Sange? Well, I'm going to go for that. Puro Sangue. Let's make it French, although it's an Irish, uh, a British bread, bread, British bread ho horse. Um, why? So, six furlong trip. Uh, shouldn't be an issue. Uh, this year, the horse has been tried over six, finished third to Just Saw and a day in Devon in a group three. Then finished fifth in a group two behind Innis Sharon, Orn, Van Dijk, Alaskan Gold. Um, so that was a good a good group two. Then dropped down to five for the group one uh, behind Asfura, Regional, Big Evs, etc. Uh, wasn't good enough, finished ninth. And then last time out, uh, back at a suitable level, back into Group 3 company, finished second behind Makarova over five. Now, Goodwood form, yeah, has got some Goodwood form. Actually finished second behind Big Evs, only beaten a neck. I really like Big Evs. I'm hoping he's just won. I'm not going to look it up yet because uh, we're currently doing this video. Um, I really like that form and... I mean, even you can go back to the sixth place was Shagran, and Shagran obviously won yesterday at Goodwood in a handicap. Um, yeah, that's good form. And now dropping back into a handicap, having been tried as high as Group 1 company this season, Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, and a Group 3. So not even tried listed races. They're going back into a handicap now, and you can see why this one is a short-ish price for this race. Uh, whoops, wrong race. Three thirty-five. Currently available at sevens. Currently available at sevens. Betfair are actually going fives, which is really interesting. So I'm quite keen on Pure Assange. I think that horse is going to run a really big race. The second horse that you can see that I've selected um, is we actually saw it just getting backed a bit here down to. You can still get eighteens about um, some again is Summergand. Now, Summergand has actually won this race. Uh, won this race in 2020 off a mark of 108. He's only going to run here off 91. Now, you've got to be careful in this race. Um, they're running off their marks from when this race closed. So there's a few others that are interesting in this race, like Rohan, for example, runs of 102, and yet the horse is only actually rated 96 now. And that put me off Rohan. If... if They'd been running off their current marks, or their real marks. Um, Rohan would have been very interesting here. Um, but he's not. So I'm hoping they're saving him. I think we've got him penciled in for something at Ascot coming up. Um, so yeah, I I'm hoping Rohan doesn't come back to bite us in the bum here. Um, but some again, running off uh, 91, would, as I said, in future run off 90. But hopefully they're not going to get down to that. Um, so form at Goodwood, there was a win. There was a ninth last year, or two years ago, sorry, in 2022. Only beaten four and a bit lengths off a mark of 100. Down to 91. The six furlong trip is what Summergan needs. Needs to get a clear run. However, if he does, you know he's going to run a really big race at some point um, over this six furlong trip. I think six furlong is actually what he wants. For some reason, they've tried him over seven for, f for five runs. Uh, four of his last five runs, sorry. The only time he actually ran over six in that, he ran well. He finished third. He went third in the final strides. Maybe they went, let's hold him back now for the Stewards Cup after that. Um, so, yeah, Summergand is my second selection in this. I think he'll go well, and I think he can uh, bounce back to form. And the final one is one of my Royal, I Royal Ascot eyecatchers, 5,000 to 1. Now, he um, has a win to his name at Goodwood. 
over six furlongs when beating many a star. I think he actually beat, uh, we were on many a star that day, I believe. Um, 5,000 to one won it that day. So has some Goodwood form. It was the run at Ascot that really caught my eye. Dropping back into handicap company for the first time in a little while. Um, sorry, had been winning handicaps, then went up uh, up in class to a group two. Wasn't good enough for that, but I, I still think off 105, would have gone a lot closer if he'd got a clear run. Didn't get a clear run and only beat three home at Ascot. And I think people looked at that and went, well, he's not good enough then. Did not get a clear run at all. Not at all. Um, and I think with a clear run tomorrow, he will go really, really close. He then went to Newcastle for a Group 3, ran OK, finished fourth. I was worried he was going to ruin his handicap mark that day. And then he went up to seven furlongs at Ascot. He doesn't need to go up to, up in trip um, to seven. Six furlongs is absolutely fine. Callum takes a useful three pounds off as well. So that means he's officially running off 101, um, or effectively running off 101. Well, he caught my eye after running off 105. I was quite keen on him off 104. So although he runs off that same 104, Callum taking three pounds off, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And I think uh, he could also run a really big race um, for Andrew Balding. So we're going for three. Let's have a look at 5,000 to one. What price is he? He is currently available at 25 to one. There's an outlier 28 and an out, outlier 33. You might get bigger than that. Um, but I'm going to say he's 25 to one because everyone should be able to get 25 to one about him. So they are my three for the Stewards Cup. Um, Puro Solange at sevens, Summergander eighteens, and five thousand to one at twenty fives. We then move on to where do we move on to? I'm just having a look on my other screen. We do move on to the next race, the Whispering Angel Seven Furlong Handicap, and the horse I like here is Jahangir. On the basis, now interestingly, is he going to run? Um, Jabal, Jabba Abdullah has just taken a couple of horses out today including one that he's just taken it out because he doesn't want to run it which isn't actually an, a, an excuse they're allowed to use um, so it'll be interesting to see if there's a, an issue with Jabba Abdullah is he pulling his horses out is he not wanting them to run in the UK anymore does he have something against UK racing don't know um, but if he is allowed to run I think I think last time out his form was very good he beat first folio who I liked at Thursk. He beat Summergand, who was third. He beat Manila Scouse, who had dropped significantly in the weights and looked very well handicapped um, and does still look potentially very well handicapped, uh, Manila Scouse. Jahangir ran away from them towards the finish. He's only a three-year-old. Obviously, they're all three-year-olds in this race. Um, but I think that gelding operation really suited him, uh, has brought out a lot more from him. And even going back through some of his previous form behind that. Third to Wood Hay Wonder, that was a good run. Third to Pura Songe and Esquire, well, that was a listed race. He's probably better than Handicap Company, and now he's got that um, win under his belt this season after being gelded. I think they're going to kick on now. Um, and Jahangir, I think, I'd be disappointed if he doesn't go very, very close tomorrow. Um, and you can currently get, great, let's just load it up on another um, window. You can currently get 11 to 2 about Jahangir for this race uh, down here. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful of him. Kirat is obviously very unexposed and potentially progressive, but has been letting some people down with some big bets. Um, yeah, it doesn't look the most straightforward uh, for Rafe Beckett. Moving on, uh, where do we go next? Do we go to the 445? We don't for the 445. I'm, I'm interested in this Angelo Buonarotti. I don't know what they're doing with the trainer. He's moved all over the place, loads. Um, if I just load up this... Uh, he went from Dominic French Davis to Raphael Frere. Raphael Frere to Rafe Beckett. Rafe Beckett to Raphael Frere. Raphael Frere to Rafe Beckett. I'm sure that must be a mistake on his... Uh, um, trainer's notifications... Obviously ran a really good race on debut, but I can't get involved in that. Um, I actually hope I actually hope Sir Peter Fossick can win that, but I'm not getting involved in that. Because I want to have a final one in the final race of the day. Um, I think we're going to see a few non-runners in that race tomorrow. We've already got a couple, um, Great Chieftain and Gloucestershire. I think we could see the likes of Native Warrior, uh, Magic Memories, Dutch Decoy, 
um, Pisanello. I think there could be a few non-runners in this race. And the horse that I have landed on is Alpha Crucis. On the basis that I actually don't mind his... I, I don't mind it being on good to firm. I think he'll be fine on this ground. Um, I think they've just been running him on soft and heavy and seeing what they can do. Almost on the basis that if we can do well on that, we'll do even better when we go back to the correct ground. Now, he caught my eye a couple of times last season, um, especially under Anna Gibson, or earlier this season even, when fourth um, in the Lincoln under Anna Gibson. I don't think she was strong enough. And then they gave her another chance at Newbury in the Spring Cup. Again, I don't think she was strong enough. Last couple of times, Jason Watson's taken over and he's gone a lot better, including when third recently, um, back in May, sorry, uh, when over this course and distance. I think that's key. Um, I liked him off the off marks of like 85, 86. He's down to 83. Richard Kingscott takes over. He does also have a win to his name at Goodwood when he beat Lunatic um, off a mark of 80. He's only off 83. They've put the cheek pieces on as well. Gary Moore looks like he's trying to win this race, doesn't he? He's got one, two, three in it. He's got three runners. He finished third, I think, last year, and I think he's had another couple of good runs in the race as well. Um, so I'm hoping that Alpha Crucis, under a bit of a stronger ride from Richard Kingsgoat, can go really well here in that first-time headgear. If he is a non-runner because of the ground, he's a non-runner, and they will be waiting for softer conditions. But I'm hopeful that they will actually let him take his chance on that faster ground, um, and he can show that he's just a better horse um, than his current handicap mark. He is currently priced at, nope, not going to find it on there, am I? It's got to go to here now. In the 5.20, he is currently priced at Alpha Crucis. 14 to 1, you can get two lots of 14, so I'm going to say 14 to 1. Native Warrior actually came out today on the basis of, I, I don't know the basis, I, I missed the reasoning. Um... Obviously very interesting if he does run. Hopefully we can get him beat though with Alpha Crucis. So let's have a look for my uh, naps for tomorrow. Let's have a quick go. I'm going to go Yukon Glen as my next best initially. Let's just go through them. I'm going to go Jahangir as my nap. And I'm going to go... Alpha Cruces is my third best. So they will be my three. Um, obviously, I did. Uh, I was fortunate, kind of, in a way, with Master Milliner drifting out to such a massive price that I'm going to get XSP because I submitted them yesterday so I could show you how to submit your naps. Um, I'm going to wait for these tomorrow because I think I think they may shorten, first of all. Um, they may, yeah, shorten, and I don't want to be getting shorter prices, particularly in that last race. And I'm also thinking that Alpha Crucis might not even run and I might have to do a reassessment of this race. If he doesn't, and Dutch Decoy is allowed to take his chance, Dutch Decoy could well be a selection for me. Um, but I will make a tweet about that if I do change my mind based on Alpha Crucis coming out. So they're my selections for tomorrow. Um, as I said, I hope some of you did continue to support me and uh, trust me. Um, we've had another We've had a couple of nice winners this week in Nürburgring and obviously Master Milliner at Goodwood.